Life on Earth is extremely diverse. Animals and plants come in all shapes and sizes. Some of them are cute, others intimidating, and then there are the ones that are just downright weird. However, it's generally agreed that despite the presence of weird life nowadays, the farther you go back in Earth's history, the weirder life gets. And perhaps life never got as funky as it did during the Triassic period. This time period saw a whole host of wacky and bizarre life forms, including the Atopodentatus and a variety of odd archosaurs. However, there was one family that really took weird to another level during this era, the Plagiosauridae. This was a family of primitive amphibians that underwent extremely unique changes. Changes that saw them essentially turn into flattened carnivorous pancakes? The first members of this family to appear was the Plagiobatrachus, which evolved into existence some 251 million years ago, right after the end of the Permian. It inhabited what is present-day Australia and superficially resembled a salamander. Being the first member of the Plagiosaurs, it was the most tame when it came to its appearances. It was indeed still somewhat flat, but not proportionally so, as its body was quite narrow. This allowed it to be agile while swimming, but hunting and surviving was still difficult during this time, so in order to make life easier, the next plagiosaur to appear, known as the plagioscutum, was broader and flatter in order to better camouflage. And this trend of becoming broader and flatter continued as each new plagiosaur emerged, with the family eventually reaching peak flatness with the final and most well-known plagiosaur, the gerothorax. The gerothorax emerged during the Middle Triassic and pushed flatness to a whole new level. It wasn't the first plagiosaur to be remarkably thin, as its preceding relative, the Megalothalma, was also extremely flat. However, Gerothorax is by far the most well-known plagiosaur for being flat like a pancake, and has been paleontologist's main source of information when it comes to plagiosaurs. It was a small amphibian, only reaching around 1 meter, or 3.3 feet in length, yet even at this very short length, it was still many magnitudes longer than it was tall. In fact, it was so flat that from the side it would be extremely easy to miss the creature, which is why it was so good at what it did, surprising unsuspecting prey. It is presumed that like many plagiosaurs, the gerothorax would have laid in the bottom of a river, or lake, submerged under a fine layer of mud and sand, while patiently waiting for an animal to swim overhead. And once it saw an animal was above, it struck. However, it was so flat that many paleontologists wondered how it could possibly see anything swimming over it. The answer to that is that like most animals, it had eyes. However, unlike most animals, the eyes were situated on top of its broad head. This way it could be laying completely horizontal and still have a clear view of what was swimming overhead. And the oddities of this amphibian didn't end here, as along with its pancake-like body and eyes on top of its skull, it also had a seriously strange bite. Most animals, including humans, take bites by lowering the bottom part of their jaws. Yet the gerothorax and other plagiosaurs for that matter, took bites in the opposite fashion, opening the top half, kind of like lifting up a toilet lid. This also meant that when it struck at a prey, its eyes were facing backwards. And since it wouldn't be able to see the prey when it was going for a kill, some paleontologists think that the plagiosaurs were suction feeders, because this way they didn't need pinpoint accuracy. Although this is conjecture and still not 100% certain. With all the weirdness the gerothorax and other plagiosaurs had, it may come as a surprise that they were highly successful, as their strange traits were actually very useful for both hiding from danger and acquiring food, and they were further aided by their alarmingly tough bony armor. It is known from specimens that the bones of gerothorax and other plagiosaurs were highly ossified, which indicates to paleontologists that they were covered in armor, which was reminiscent of chainmail, as one paleontologist put it. Additionally, plagiosaurs possessed internal gills, meaning that they were further protected from external forces. This also meant that they were better at adapting to a wide range of environments, giving them a huge advantage. And the success of plagiosaurs was reflected in the evolutionary stasis the gerothorax experienced. In other words, paleontologists noted that through its existence, it did not go through that many evolutionary changes which indicates that the carnivorous pancake body plan was actually quite a well-developed design. The success of the odd plagiosaurs is also reflected by the survival time of the last member. Fossil records show that gerothorax was thriving for over 30 million years during the Triassic, which is no small feat. And throughout the Triassic, this family was also able to spread throughout Europe, large parts of Eastern Asia, and possibly even in Southeast Asia around what is present-day Thailand. 
Yet despite their sturdy nature and their wide range, the plagiosaurs were not able to withstand all that Mother Nature had to throw at them, as by the end of the Triassic no plagiosaurs remained. Since they seemed to go extinct as the Jurassic was being ushered in, paleontologists believe that they may have perished in the Jurassic Triassic extinction event, an extinction event that is believed to have been caused by massive volcanic eruptions, which would have wreaked havoc on the climate, and eventually bringing down our favorite carnivorous pancaked amphibian. <laughs>